everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Carol. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be sharing with you my top 5 blushes. I really love blushes, okay? I really, 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 really do. I have about 12 blushes or maybe like 15-ish blushes in my collection. I really don't know anymore. I did the declutter which will be linked right here uh, if you are curious. I didn't add anything nor did I take anything back from the pile of things that I decluttered although there is one blush that I'm kind of com contemplating bringing back just for YouTube purposes but I am very happy with what I have right now and I think that it's kind of enough but I do want some blushes from other brands and that's pretty bad anyways today's video is my top five existing blushes in my collection the ones that I've definitely chosen to keep because hey come on they're in my top five one of these is a blush that you can't get because it was a limited edition but if I want to be true to my top five it has to be here it just has to so maybe I can start with that one because no one can get it but if you have it lucky you you should use it more often and that is my Yana Provi Zildjian Burn blush in the shade Sunkissed Glow Okay, listen, I'm really boring with my favorite blush colors because it kind of looks like nothing. And it's going to be a recurring theme with pretty much all of them. I do love a blush that looks like nothing because these are the blushes that are the most flattering in my opinion. And they are so easy to wear with anything you could pair it with. Like if you were the wildest green and purple and blue eye look. And you're like, okay, what blush should I use? Da -da -da -da. A blush like this, obviously, because you don't want to take away, you don't want to take anything away from the artistry that went into your eye look. You want something simple and easy and flattering at the same time. So something like that is going to be just great. Blushes are known for being notoriously difficult to swatch, so I really don't know if this is gonna be any... I don't know if this swatch is going to be of any use to anyone out there, but hey, at least I tried. Can you see it? If not, that only goes to prove how natural this is and how flattering it will be on each and every skin tone out there. Okay, next one, let's finish up with like the higher end ones that are powders first. Next one is from Charlotte Tilbury. I, okay listen, I hate to say this, but this blush looks stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning on my skin and I just, I am biased. I'm telling you about blushes that suit me the best. I really don't know if this will work perfectly on people who have like a much darker skin tone, but it's worth a try because this is a beautiful, beautiful blush tone. It's the Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop Blush Blusher in the shade First Love from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, okay, again, I really don't know if you can see anything because it kind of looks like my skin tone, but slightly different. And let's see. I really don't think you can see it. I really, really don't. Can you see anything? Should I try to build it up? Let's see if I can build it up. These are blushes that are so easy to apply because there is no way you can mess it up. It's just impossible. You can't mess these blushes up. Can It's, it's supposed to be right here. If you can see something great. If you can't, I'm sorry, but I kind of told you already. Okay, next is a blush from a brand called Pupa, and this is my most recent blush that has somehow made its way to my top five in a matter of a month. Is that shocking to me? No, because I know that I love Pupa's formulas overall, but for it to be like one of my top five, that says a lot. 
this one is probably something that you will be able to see more than the other two because it's more um, coppery and more bronzy than, or uh, maybe not. Oh, uh, maybe yeah. Let's see. This is actually the blush I'm wearing today. So if you're looking at my cheeks and wondering what blush I'm wearing, it's the Extreme Blush Radiant by Pupa in the shade 10. It's a beautiful, warm, bronzy... <laughs> Let's see if I can build it up even more. Okay, listen, like blushes are just hard to swatch. And that's a fact universally acknowledged. Let's see, maybe. Is it better now? Okay, oh, I think you can see it. <gasps> I think you can see it. It's right here. It's so stunning. Okay, I'm gonna hold my hand at this angle because I'm like enjoying the fact that you can see how beautiful this blush is. And they're all so long lasting. They all apply like a dream. They're all perfect in terms of formula. Like they're, I don't have a single flaw to say about each and every one of these blushes. They're all perfect in my eyes. It's like they're all my own children and I love them all and I cannot see a single flaw in all of them. And even if I can, for example, like this packaging, I overlook it because I'm obsessed with the blush itself. This is the Essence Satin Touch Blush. It's like one of the cheapest blushes you could ever get in the shade Satin Bronze. People talk about Satin Coral or Satin Love but I don't know why they don't talk about satin bronze because in my opinion, satin bronze is the nicest of the range. It's just what it says it is. It's like a bronzy shade, a lighter one than um, the Pupa blush. Let's see if I can really build it up. I love this. Can you see it? I think you can. Oh my gosh. See those like drugstore like blushes surprise you sometimes with pigmentation, with formulas. I made a video in Arabic about like my most affordable products, my top most affordable products and what I think of them. And spoiler alert, they were all incredible products. So sometimes price is not an indicator of quality. And sometimes you can pay a ton of money for something and it'll be crap. It has happened to me before with foundations specifically, with eyeshadows sometimes. Oh my gosh, a lot of things that are really expensive aren't always that good. And a lot of things that are so affordable aren't always bad, are actually incredible sometimes such as the Satin Touch Blushes from Pupa and the Extreme Blush Radiant from... Wait, wait. Such as the Essence Satin Touch Blush and the Extreme Blush from Pupa. Okay, last but not least is a classic and it's the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Dusk. Okay, listen. Listen, listen, listen. This is incredible. People say... People sing its praises for a reason. It's the easiest blush in the entire world to wear, to apply. It lasts forever and a day. Okay, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend it on the back. I applied too much of it, okay? You need a pea size amount, if not even tinier. You need like a drop of it to apply and on both of your cheeks but this is just so pretty and you can see like I definitely have a preference when it comes to colors I've come to understand that these are the blushes that I love to use the most as much as I love a bright corally shade like shadow or like machado blush or a pink blush apparently give me a good old boring bronzy blush and I'll be happy. <laughs> Apparently I like a nude toned blush. It's not just that I like these, it's that I find these the most effortless to wear and the least amount of thought goes into it. It's just easy. It just is. 
So um yeah, these are my top five blushes. Let me let me show you how they look when they're like all elegantly posed one next to the next one next to the other or something what, what am i trying to say look i mean they just look like they're supposed to be in a video just raving and praising each and every one of them if i had to tell you to go ahead and buy just one of them oof. Okay, listen, if you're rich and you have extra money to spend, Charlotte Tilbury. If you want to spend the least amount and get the most, Essence. If you like a no, no foundation look, Glossier. If you like to be teased because you really can't buy it anymore, yeah, no? You can't get it. And if you have access to Pupa, because Pupa unfortunately doesn't exist in many countries. And I don't know why, because it's like one of my favorite brands of all time. Get Pupa because it's it's a it's an interesting brand that brings really really good products, but their distributors need a spanking at this point because this brand needs to become international and the website needs to start shipping internationally. I'm just saying. So I recommended all of them. Now, if I want to tell you about like my blush brushes, um, okay, listen, I know that I'm, I've been cruelty free for a while now, but this blush is really, really old in my collection. It's a Wayne Goss blush in the number 14 blush brush in the number 14 it's just like a round uh like almost like a big blending brush like a big crease brush but for your cheeks for the blush and also where's my other thing ah here we go if your brush is more dense and less pigmented and you want to get the most out of it then I really, really, really like the Anna Provis. Where is it? The Anna Provis blush or brush in the number one, I think. Here we go. This one in the number one. It picks up blush really, really well. But if your brush, if your blush has a lot of pigmentation, don't use this. Use this. If your blush is really densely packed and doesn't have enough pigmentation or you don't think that it has enough pigmentation, this is what you should uh, use, something like that. Anyways, I'm done filming for today. I'm exhausted. Right now, over here will be some videos for you to watch, some recommendations if you're not sick of me already, and here will be a picture of me so you can subscribe to my channel, so please do so, and I hope to see you in the next video. Please leave me some recommendations of blushes that you love, what tones you like and everything, and we will reconvene in the next video. Bye.